All right, everybody, we are back live, Wise 24. We are still early on at the beginning of our 14 hour session uh, from hearing teams from around the world. And as our, as our, hey, I would just introduce you to the next team. So we're super excited. Uh, just a few little reminders again, when the speaker is on the screen and you want to blow up their image, you just double click on their image and it will maximize um, their picture. Similarly, if you want to go back to minimizing it, just double click it again. And remember, you can always follow up with any of the speakers directly if you go to your people tab and just click in the person's name and that will send them a direct message. So we hope you'll follow up with these amazing founders. And with that, we are headed to Montreal and Anna is going to uh, lead the way to introduce the Canadian team. Anna. Hello, bonjour. Hi, everyone. How are you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Fantastic. Great. So, hello, everyone. So, uh, this uh, my name is Anna Marinescu. I'm speaking to you live from Montreal. So delighted to bring forward Wise24 once again this year. Thank you so much for your trust, uh, Ari and team at Women Startup Labs for having us participate again after uh, last year's first edition. So the Scotiabank Women Initiative in collaboration with Scotiabank, Roy Nat Capital and Jaroslavsky Fraser is delighted to showcase some of our top women entrepreneurs in tech. Um, we are delighted to have this opportunity to organize this incredible event uh, for Montreal, which is the only city in Canada to participate. And we are thrilled to hear from our founders today. So um, without further ado, we will hear from our first startup. And I'd like to call to the stage Anise from Tenjiva. Thank you, Anna. Did you know? that global textile production, here we're only talking about fabric, is a $965 billion industry. And each year, one third of their production is thrown away. Why? Their technologies are outdated and they feel it's too complicated to do it another way. Simultaneously, apparel brands globally struggle to access ready to ship textiles that can make their supply chain more agile. Three years ago, while working as a textile sourcing expert, I noticed this gap and how to fix it. We built Tenjiva, a powerful two-sided marketplace that connects the supply and the demand while simplifying the trading process so that it becomes a win-win to sell these untapped resources rather than simply discarding them. For textile suppliers worldwide, Tenjiva becomes a way to connect with clients, to promote their products, to get digital easily, and to also have a sustainable alternative for their surplus. While for the 300,000 apparel brands globally, Tenjiva becomes a reliable way to connect with suppliers, to access millions of meters of ready to ship fabric to make their supply chain more responsive. Tenjiva is enhanced with industry-specific attributes, algorithm, and a fully managed service from samples to exportation. Our business model is simple. We charge a 20% service fee on meters sold and 100% of the sample sales go to Tenjiva. In two years, we've built the platform, onboarded suppliers across seven countries, cleared logistic, legal, processing to make Tenjiva available in 30 countries. So far, we have 350,000 meters listed and more than 6 million to come with our signed suppliers. As of March, we launched our marketing strategies, which increased by 450% the visits to the platform. In an industry dominated by face-to-face -face meetings, the current global situation will force all parties to evolve their sourcing strategies. In our technology, Tenjiva, 
will be there to accompany them in this transition. Tenjiba has unique momentum. Now is the time to seize it. We are raising 1.4 million to expand our marketing strategy, grow our team, and secure the strongest position in this untapped market. I am Anisia, CEO and founder of Tenjiva, the future of the textile industry. Thank you. I can't hear Anna. Can everyone hear me? Hi, Amanda. We can hear you. So thank you very much, uh, Annie. That was great. And now let's hear from Amanda Truscott from Rhythmic Solutions. Thanks very much, Anna. At Rhythmic Solutions, we increase uptime in mines with analytics that optimize maintenance, reduce greenhouse gases, and extend the life of equipment. Let's say you're a reliability engineer in a mine and the oil pump in a haul truck breaks. Combined maintenance and downtime might cost the company around $30,000 if you catch it, but you're sifting through thousands of data points for a hundred pieces of equipment so you don't catch it and the engine blows. And now they're looking at a cost of 2 million. Situations like that are why mining companies typically spend 20 to 50% of their annual operating budgets on maintenance and downtime has an even bigger impact. That's why we created Asset Health Analyzer, uh -huh, for short. With AHA, mines get earlier, more accurate alarms, prioritize maintenance, higher yields, lower emissions, and reduced capex. A key advantage is our digital twin approach. It runs a machine learning model of a healthy piece of equipment alongside the actual asset so that when there's any difference between the real and the ideal, the algorithms detect those differences and provide intelligence to users. We'll charge a flat fee for pilots and annual subscription fees based on a percentage of the millions in value projected for each customer. The market for predictive maintenance on mobile mining equipment is worth about 875 million American dollars a year. Right now, we're focused on the roughly 15% of that based in Canada. The total predictive maintenance market is expected to reach 23 billion by 2026. So if we take even 1 15th of that, we're looking at 1.5 billion. There is competition and AHA is unique in several ways. It's resilient enough to handle the extreme conditions in mines. It also integrates better than anything else with the tools they already use. Unlike manufacturer systems, AHA is vendor independent and it works equally well with any brand. Our site specific baselines are a key differentiator. They let mines get up and running very quickly with useful insights. Our team combines data science with decades of experience gathering and analyzing data from equipment in mines all over North and South America. In two years, we've developed our product and infrastructure, completed three POCs with mines and data collection partners, and landed a real-time paid pilot with a mining fleet operator that owns 600 pieces of equipment. With a million Canadian dollars, we'll complete our current pilot, get five more, and start building ongoing revenue through POC conversions. To summarize, at Rhythmic, we combine data science with deep subject matter expertise. That's why more than any other solution, AHA lets mines hit the ground running to increase uptime and extend the life of their assets. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. This is great. And now let's welcome Inara Lalani from Fem Therapeutics. Hi, my name is Inara and I'm the co-founder and COO at Fem Therapeutics and we're personalizing pelvic medicine for women. Due to childbirth and the natural aging process, one in every 10 women around the world will suffer from a condition called pelvic down the vaginal canal. Now, this is a health condition, but it is also about human dignity and a woman's sexual and overall quality of life. Just in the United States alone, there are 3.3 million women living with this condition, and this is only expected to increase with the aging population. These women have two methods for treatment. The first is to be fitted with accessory, which is an intravaginal device that holds up the pelvic organs from descending, similar to a menstrual cup. Although these pessaries come in over a hundred different shapes and sizes, they are poorly designed and mass produced. 
They do not accurately fit the patient's pelvic anatomy and cause painful open sores and irritation. These pessaries also have to be fitted using a trial and error process by doctors and need to be removed, washed, and reinserted biweekly, making this extremely unhygienic. This results in a 40% failure rate. I mean, imagine walking into a shoe store and only having the option of buying high heels and wearing them for the rest of your life. That's exactly what these feel like. The second option is to undergo surgery, which is not only expensive, but those that do have it face a 30% risk of developing another prolapse. Together, this represents a $1.2 billion problem in the United States waiting to be solved. So there's clearly a need to improve the vaginal pessary and prevent surgical intervention. The solution is Femme Therapeutics. We're designing a customized pessary for every patient. We achieve this in three simple steps. First, doctors will receive a tool to better assess each patient's prolapse and their vaginal measurements. Then this data is processed to design the customized pessary and finally, 3D printed with medical grade silicone. These pessaries will be sold directly to patients using a monthly subscription plan where they will receive two biodegradable disposable pessaries per month. Currently, we're developing the prototype for our patented idea and are on track to conduct a first in women feasibility study in quarter two of 2021 with the support of urogynecologists in Montreal. We're looking to raise a pre-seed round of $500,000 to support clinical trials and obtain quality assurance and regulatory approval. We're a women-driven, multidisciplinary team of business perspectives, medical doctors, and engineers making us well-equipped to take on this endeavor. For decades, women have not been able to talk about their health, but we're here to change that. We're Femme Therapeutics, and we're on a mission to elevate women's quality of life for all. Thank you. Hi, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes. So thank you so much. Now let's hear from Alison Hirakawa, founder of co-founder of Drop Genie. Hi, my name's Allison. I'm a co-founder of Drop Genie. We build machines that will unleash new therapies for patients. Robert Legaspi, you've probably never heard this name, but he is an acute lymphoblastic leukemia patient. For over 20 years, he was in and out of the hospital receiving chemotherapy. But a couple of years ago, he was the recipient of a revolutionary new therapy where they took the immune cells out of his body, modified them so that they could combat his cancer and infuse them back into him. I'm happy to say he is still in remission to this day. Robert's therapy was possible due to something, a breakthrough in something called gene editing. Gene editing is basically like molecular scissors and glue. You can snip bits of DNA and paste them into discrete areas in the genome. It's also potentially the key to over 6,000 different genetic diseases. So why are we seeing more personalized therapies? Well, they're expensive and they're difficult to make. Let me tell you why. Even though gene editing sounds fancy, it's kind of like cooking. You're basically moving liquids at certain times and in certain places. This usually is done by a human, a scientist in the lab such as myself, using a device like this. You can imagine not very accurate and can't handle a lot of work. Some companies have come up with robots, multi-million dollar large footprint devices that um, can do the work, but they're expensive, difficult to use, not very gentle, and you basically need a PhD to run them. Drop Genie's solution has been to take the gentleness of human touch and the throughput of automation and create something that is 100 times cheaper and is 10 times faster at performing gene editing. So if we don't use our hands and we don't use robots, what do we use? we use electricity. We're able to move highways of droplets of gene editing reagents on an open array of electrodes, all completely automated from an external software. High speed, low cost molecular surgery in a droplet. Drop Genie's first product is going after the $1 billion rapidly growing R&D market to produce something for scientists to use. We're making a machine, we're making a software and we're producing, we're getting recurring revenues from a high gross margin single use consumable. Drop Genie's technology has been published in many peer reviewed journals. 
Um, we're an amazing team of passionate scientists and engineers. My inventors or my co-founders are inventors of this technology and I myself have um, a PhD in biochemistry. With our prototype that I'm showing you here, we have raised $1.5 million to date from Real Ventures, SOSB, Bolt VC, and Breakout Labs. And we're using this chip right now to perform gene editing in-house. We hope to deploy our machines and our consumables to beta testers at the end of this year. We're currently opening a seed round of $5 million at the end of this month to further bring down the price of manufacturing this consumable and to expand our user base. So please join us in unleashing a wave of um, new therapies for patients through low cost molecular surgery in the droplet. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. And now let's welcome Nardine Nakla from Siminome. Nardine, are you with us? So um, I think Nardine is possibly trying to connect. Um, perhaps we can join our next uh, speaker. So I'm not sure if we're perhaps experiencing um, some di difficulties here in the room. It shouldn't be too long. Oh, and you're connecting. So Pamela, uh, yes. So Pamela is going to go next. Uh, uh, so Pamela Eve Champagne from Elite Neurokinetics. Yes. Hi, I'm Pamela, CEO at Elite Neurokinetics. We are building a platform for better and safer sports. And as former football players, we started with American football. But before I dig into that, let me explain why we need to rethink the word safety in contact sports. It's because as surprising as it can be, helmets do not protect the brain against concussions. Here's an example. Think of the shell of this egg as the skull and the yolk inside as the brain. Then imagine I wrap these eggs with a lot of bubble wrap and drop it. Yes, the shell would be protected, but not the yolk inside. Just like the helmet cannot prevent the head from moving inside and consequences are real. As passionate PhDs from McGill, Queens, and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, we know that this risk for sport injuries comes from the way players move. So we went back on the field to collect a huge amount of data, and we created a video analysis model based on players' biomechanics and machine vision. From videos, our model identifies the strengths and weaknesses of athletes. It then provides reports and targeted intervention plans to empower them. I'm proud to say that more than 5,000 athletes loved our first MVP, and their proud parents are willing to pay the subscription model because they trust that their kids are protected by more than the helmet. With our national partner, our glowing data set positions us as leader in making the game safer for the 6 million amateur football players in America. And in this market alone, sport injuries cost $20 billion yearly. To tackle this market, our key differentiator is research. Our latest research project showed that the athletes across Canada need their sport right now more than ever. That's why we launched Football From Home to bring them safe sports to all community. Sport helped us become their scientists, psychologists, entrepreneurs. And because brains have no borders, we are looking for a strategic partnership to extend our initiative in the US, in Japan, in Mexico. At Elite Neurokinetics, we are transforming the sport industry, not in 10 years, but today. Join us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela. Thank so you. <laughs> so let's see if Nardine is ready to share her audio and video. Um, so I'll just, uh, we'll just ask for some technical help, maybe from our friends at WSL to, um, great. Okay. So we'll move on with our next co-founder. Thank you, Pamela. 
Bye -bye. and uh, help me welcome Ashwak El Hashari from Invicare. Hello everyone, my name is Ashwak Al Hashidi. I'm a dental specialist in implantology and the co-founder of Invicare. At Invicare, we develop nanobiomaterials to control implant infections, starting with the dental implant market. Do you know there are over 60 million people across the world living with dental implants, and this number is on a rise. However, the risk of these implants getting infected is very high leading to serious complications like implant failure and bone loss. Current treatment techniques are not efficient in removing the, the microbes or resolving infections. Some even leave implant service damaged. Every care team is on a mission to resolve these infections, alleviate people's suffering, and reduce healthcare costs. How we do this? We are the first team who developed the, the nanocrystalline technology in a gel form with a proven disinfection and bone healing properties. Our technology is the outcome of seven years of research at McGill, Harvard, and University of Montreal. With our technology, we provide three times more efficiency in cleaning while reducing the time and cost of the procedure into half without causing any damage to implant or a need for uh, training. With our technology, both implant specialists and patients will not struggle with infections anymore. We plan to sell our products to, implant, to uh, dental professionals to use it during the regular maintenance visits of implant patients to their clinic. And this will give us an addressable market of 12 billion of a recurring revenue. Inficare is led by a two founders, Professor Tamimi, the main inventor of the technology, and myself. We, are, we have a combined of 30 years experience in the dental and biomedical applications, uh, application uh, experience. We are also supported by a team with a multidisciplinary background from business, accounting, finance, and engineering. Currently, we are at the pre-launch phase of our market-ready Health Canada-approved FDA-registered prevention product, which we call it Neophylaxis. And we receive a uh, strong interest from top distributors and implant companies for our distribution deals. To proceed with these deals, we are currently raising our seed round of 1.6 million, which will be used to fund the marketing activities of Neophylaxis and preparation of the production line. And we're also looking for a strategic partner for our expansion and uh, experts and leaders from the business and marketing fields. And together, we will make implants eternal. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwak. And now let's welcome our next co-founder, Katrina Albert from Lux. So Katrina is connecting on the line. Here you go. Thank you. So hi, my name is Katrina and I'm a co-founder at Lux. We're helping public and private organization understand and optimize their operation on the surface of the planet. How are we doing so? Well, we're building the first live high resolution imaging feed of the surface of the planet powered by, wait for it, high altitude balloons. So why would we need a live high resolution imaging feed of the surface of the planet? Well, do you remember the Australian wildfires and how fast they spread through the country? That's because the $1.5 billion market of aerial imaging is dominated by platforms such as drones, airplane, or space-based asset, which cannot offer the resolution or the frequency of imaging required for these critical decision-making. In the case of the wildfires, they didn't have access to the information that tell them where the fires were in real time. And this gap in the aerial imaging market is creating untapped high value application, which our platform is responding to. So how do we create this live high resolution imaging feed of the surface of the planet anyway? Well, we have this unique IP that actually is have developed high altitude balloon that stay over the same point of interest for months at a time and is able to deliver high resolution imaging of an area. 
this area can be up to 50 kilometers square and can be as high resolution as the images of a drone. From this aerial imaging combined with machine learning algorithms, we're able to provide actionable insights platform for the different industries that we work with in the mining, defense, and agriculture sector. Fence, what that means is being able to know where the fires are in real time, where they're heading, in order to save lives and infrastructure. Our business model is based on a yearly SaaS that really depends on the size of the area that you want to cover and the type of information that you want on this area. So we are very proud to have launched this company in Canada in 2018. But over the past year, we've been able to open our first office in Australia, launch our first prototype of our platform, and close our first contact with the Australian Defence Force. We've also received funding from the Canadian Space Agency for the development of our platform, and also Rio Tinto in the mining sector. We are a small team of very highly technical engineers and two co-founders, myself, a sales professional, and my other co-founder is a serial entrepreneur. Over the next year, we'll be really focused on commercializing our technology and closing our first seed round of $5 million US. So what we're hoping to do is work with you to be able to launch this innovative platform, which can have an impact across multiple industries over the globe. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. And now let's welcome Marina Pavlovlik Rivas co-founder at Eli Health. Hello everyone, I'm Marina, CEO of Eli. Women's contraceptive needs have shifted, but not the innovations to meet them. Close to 30% of women want hormone-free contraception, but the options are missing. That's a 28 billion time in the US alone, and we are early movers on that booming market. We offer the no compromise option that so much women are actively looking for. Our product is an at-home device that monitors key hormones in saliva and an app that provides powerful insights. Think of a connected glucometer, but for hormones in saliva. Our technology is already patented and more patents are on the way. We only have one direct competitor that is FDA approved. Their product is hard to use and has a 90% effectiveness. Our product was designed to delight users and study shows it could reach a 98% effectiveness. Our business model is simple. There's a one-time fee of $150 for the device and $45 monthly subscription. Our team is uniquely qualified to execute our ambitious vision and solve a need that I had myself for more than a decade. We have expertise in biomedical engineering, chemistry, medicine, software, and machine learning. Our advisors include leading medtech entrepreneurs and physicians. Together, we're moving fast. In less than a year, we built a team, a prototype, an IP portfolio, and key partnerships with eminent medical centers. Among our early backers are Techstars, local and national government, and we have proven to be highly capital efficient. Also, COVID has not stopped us. It has even amplified the urge for our solution. What we bring in contraception is an historic milestone for women's health, and we will not stop there. Our mission is to empower women to take control of their health at all stages of their lives. For example, around menopause, knowing hormone variations can help prevent heart diseases, osteoporosis, and even dementia. AXA, one of the largest insurers in the world, just selected Eli as one of the 10 startups that will deeply transform women's health. We are opening a 1 million to 1.5 million seed round to complete our product, validate it clinically, and do a first low-risk pilot in 2021. We hope that you will join us to change the course of history for women's health. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Congratulations. Thank you. So. I'd like to welcome to welcome our next founder to this virtual stage, Solène Brouard Gaillot from Polystiver. Hello. Hello. 
So yes, my name is Solène Roa, and I'm the CEO and founder of Polystarvert. We have developed a new technology to recycle plastics in a circular economy, especially plastic number six, polystyrene. Have you ever wondered what happened to your yogurt cup after eating it? It ended its life in the landfill, or even worse, in the ocean. Marine litter and global warming are very serious challenges that impact us today. So why aren't plastic more recycled? Well, there are a couple of issues. First of all, contamination. Plastics are mixed together. They need to be sorted and they are dirty. They need to be cleaned. This takes a lot of work. Moreover, this is a challenge to reach the required quality for the food grade approval. So in order to overcome the obstacles, at Polystyvert, we have developed a dissolution technology. We put the plastics in contact with an essential oil, natural product, and polystyrene dissolve, just like sugar in coffee. And the other plastic do not dissolve, what makes it very easy for us to filter them out. Then we apply our preparatory purification process in order to remove any kind of contamination. This allows us to have a very high quality end product. We even meet the FDA expectation for food grade. That's how we set a real circular economy for polystyrene. Our demo plant in Montreal is up and running since 2018, and our business model is to sell licenses to polystyrene producers. This is a $28 billion market. Among our clients today, we count Total, Apple, and Lego. They need our technology not only because the demand for recycled plastic is high today, but also because the regulation is increasing. And thanks to us, they can decrease their production costs by 30%. Our team is made up of myself as a CEO. I have an MBA and I did my career in aeronautics. Marianne Lepinois is our CFO. She's very experienced in M&A. Jan Kaplan is our CTO is the great engineer who built our demo plan, and Professor Roland Coté is our VP for research and development. So we are a very multidisciplinary team. Moreover, I'm very proud to announce you today that the World Economic Forum chose Paul Stivert as one of the 100 startups worldwide that are recognized as a technology pioneer. We are very proud. That's great. And you too can do something today to protect the environment. So join us for a greener tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Solène, and con congratulations. So Thank you very much. <laughs> joining us is Nardine Nakla from Simunome. And Nardine is, uh, well, actually, we'll go ahead with Jennifer, Jennifer Ivans from CanScanTech, and then we will, uh, we will uh, move forward with Nardine. So Jennifer, are you able to co connect again? I saw you uh, popping uh, a few seconds ago. Fantastic. So hi, Jennifer. Absolutely. You can take it Okay, away. excellent. All right, sorry about that, guys. Hi, everybody. Over 80% of everything we buy arrives in a shipping container. What's remarkable is one in five of those giant metal boxes are damaged. And a damaged container loses the goods inside of it and causes all sorts of accidents along the supply chain. It's up to terminal operators that work at ports to check each one of these containers as they operate through their yard. This is a very manual and subjective job. It's dangerous and it causes all sorts of operational bottlenecks. This is only getting worse because port volumes are just increasing and increasing and increasing. My name is Jennifer Ivins and I am the founder and the CEO of CanScan. I've made a career for myself working for ocean carriers and I saw this problem every day at my job. Two and a half years ago, I said enough was enough. It's time to solve this heritage problem. I founded CanScan, and our ultimate objective is to automate this process with machine vision. At CanScan, we've created a cloud-based artificial intelligence that connects directly to the cameras that already exist in the yards of the ports and the terminals. This is a plug-and-play solution. We're looking at the containers as they pass by the video feeds, and the minute we see something wrong with the box, we flag it directly to our customers. Currently, our solution is being used at most of the port authorities in Canada, several terminal operators, which are private entities, both in Canada and Europe, and we're in negotiations in Asia. We work with trucking companies, ocean carriers, 
crane operators, depots for warehousing containers. This is a $12 trillion industry and it just keeps growing. So right now our executive team is comprised of a bunch of various uh, experts and it's permitting us to actually accelerate very, very quickly. We've got uh, PhDs that are overseeing our AI division. We've got our business development team that's led by an a, um, enterprise level sales expert. And we've got a engineer who's leading our projects that's got 30 years of experience in large scale industrial projects. And of course myself and my background in the industry. So right now, we're at our first revenue year. What we have is a SaaS model solution. So every time we inspect a container, we charge our customer a small amount. Uh, we're expect expecting to generate about uh, $500,000 by the end of the year. And then with our existing sales pipeline, we're looking at about 10 to $14 million over the next two to three years. And this is just getting started. We've won several contests and we've been working with several partners. So we expect this to be multiplied very, very quickly which is why I'm here today. So we're looking for investors for our seed round, which is opening as we speak. We're looking for $3 million to permit us to basically integrate our AI with all sorts of different partners throughout the world. So if there are investors out there that have the same vision as us, that see the potential of this small scrappy AI company to take over the world of automation of ports, then please contact us. And remember at CanScan, we check all the boxes. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. This is great. And now our last founder uh, is Nardine Nakla from Siminome, and she is joining us on my phone. So I'm going to put her right here. And uh, Nardine, <laughs> thanks for bearing with us. Okay. So, uh, I think you're ready to go. Okay. Do you guys hear me well? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you, Anna, for going out of your, your way to connect me. Oh, no, I just um, try to make you fit better on the screen. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Nardine. So you can go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nardine Nafla. I'm a co-founder and CTO at Simunome, where we develop AI disease simulations to predict likely failures and drug development process even before stepping into the lab. In the last three years in Alzheimer's disease alone, companies have lost 10, over $10 billion in combined cost and market value, and that was caused by late stage failures in drug development. All right, I'm back, Nardine. We are not able to hear your audio, or Anna, maybe that's your audio. Did we lose her? Oh, hold on. So let's, let's try again. Let's just start over for, for, for Nadine. So it, it seems like the, the audio just got muted. So sorry about that. Just bear with us. She was 30 seconds into her pitch. Thank you, Kristen. Go, so Nardine, do you it. mind taking that back from the top? Uh, sure, no problem. Thank you. Go ahead, Nardine. Well, thank you everyone for your patience. Um, my name is Nardine Nafla. I'm a co-founder and CTO at Simunome, where we develop AI disease simulations to predict likely failures in a drug discovery process, even before stepping into the lab. In the last three years, over $10 billion were lost only in Alzheimer's disease in combined cost and market value by the failures in late stage uh, clinical trials. Due to the complexity of biological systems, it's very difficult to predict the outcome of clinical trials. Researchers usually take a wait and see approach, which leads to painful and costly failures. Our approach focuses on biological accuracy and rigorous validation steps. While most companies in this space focus on the drug itself, we focus on the drug target. We realize that optimizing the drug itself still led to late stage failures. Our target market includes pharma companies, biotech companies, and also academia. Um, altogether at Seminome, we offer a paradigm shift from the status quo, which is wait 10, 15 years and spend billions of dollars to still fail a clinical trial. Our team consists of a range of expertise. Our CEO has a PhD and postdoc in um, molecular immunity. He has five years experience in pharmaceutical industry, both in clinical research and in um, uh, commercial analysis. Myself, the CTO, I I'm finishing my PhD in, neural, in computational neuroscience at McGill University. I've been using machine learning and modeling brain systems. 
In the, fa- in the past few months, we actually completed our first model, which is for Alzheimer's disease. We, we reached up to 80% accuracy. Uh, we're now working on incorporating more diseases in the same model since we, while we're working on this, we realized this actually improves our reliab- the reliability of the model results. We recruited Dr. Stephen Cunningham, former CSO at Novartis, as our scientific advisor. As you know, we aim to increase clinical trial accuracy one disease at a time. As we embark on our journey, we are looking for strategic partnerships and mentorship in the life science industry and in um, um, customer acquisition. We would like to get our tech in the hands of those who need it the most. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nardine. This is a bit unusual, but I'm so happy that we've done that. So thank, thank you, you so much, much. everyone, and thank you, Anna. Great. So, Kristen, now back to you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you also for modeling. Uh, you know, women leaders are uh, being creative in the moment, making it work, and you did. So thank you so much with your uh, with Team Canada. And want to remind everybody you can follow up with any of the founders if you go to the People tab and um, type in the name. You can also go to the Expo and follow up with Team Canada and the and the specifics there. And we also want to take this moment to thank our sponsors. It takes, as you all know, that put on events. It takes sponsors that are investing in women, investing in women startup labs. So um, specifically our big sponsors are uh, Moon, uh, Gentro and Spark Amplify. Specifically wanted to give a shout out to them. All right, and now um, we are going to pivot to our next session and want to thank everybody for their um, uh, patience as we ran over a little bit. I'm back. (laughs) So hi everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yes. Great. Anna, you're so like a magician. Was, <laughs> <laughs> that was just fantastic. Wow. What an impressive group and what an ex- impressive uh, experience. Uh, thank you, everyone, who uh, joined forces to make magic happen. Yes. I think we just experienced something very uh, unique. So thank you so much. Um, so moving forward to um, towards the end of our okay. event, um, I would first. Uh, so so um, so right. So I would like to introduce to you uh, Maria Manjo Cavallo on behalf of our jury, and I would invite Maria to share a few words with us. Uh, before she unveils the name of the WISE 24 Montreal Jury Award. Um, if any of you are joining us um, uh, as, um, uh, on the link, if you don't mind muting yourself, please. So for everybody that's not speaking right now, please, uh, you can place yourself on mute. Uh, so we'll have our, uh, our founders have actually joined us and they'll be able to uh, hear your feedback and also hear uh, the jury's announcement. Uh, so I will ask you to, um, again, please mute yourself. Thank you so much. Um, so um, just share a few words on Maria's uh, bio notes. So uh, Maria Maggio-Cavallo is the vice, pr- vice president of commercial banking for Quebec region. And um, her key responsibilities are leading and implementing our commercial bank market area sales strategies, uh, deepening our client relationships and leveraging the bank's broader relationships, systems and expertise. Uh, Maria joined Scotiabank in 1996 and she leads a diverse team of relationship professionals dedicated to assisting mid-market Canadian businesses with their day-to-day banking needs, trade and financing requirements. So in addition to several board and volunteer positions, Maria is an advisory member on the Scotia Women's Initiative um, um, Committee, and we are very grateful for all her dedication. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Maria, for having been a champion for this event since day one. And now we are very eager to uh, hear from you and uh, hear what you thought about uh, the pitches. Thank you, Anna. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for passing me the baton. So um, I was very impressed. I have no words. I'm very proud to be part of this uh, this clan of women. Um, so very proud and would do whatever we can to, to help them move along. So um, but before I divulge the, the winner of this event, I, I just wanted to take a moment to first 
congratulate all of the founders, the Montreal founders, founders and the Montreal entrepreneurs who sent in their pitches at the start of this process. And the pitches that we just heard are in effect of the top 10 that stood apart for a variety of reasons uh, used by the WISE 24 Montreal jury. Um, and I think I'll take some time to just go through the criteria again. So each pitch was evalu evaluated based on criteria that fell into four distinct buckets. These buckets were first innovation as related to the idea, the product, and technology, uh, the feasibility of that uh, product idea, and the problem gap that it was addressing. Second, impact and disruption, you know, be it social, environmental, governance, community, et cetera. The third bucket was the viability of the idea, uh, the scalability of it, the market opportunity, and of course, uh, time to, uh, to, to market. And finally, an evaluation of the founders team also weighed in. Uh, we looked at the team's experience and the team that they also assembled around them to help them grow their business. So we have seen some very truly impressive and inspiring pitches today. And again, I, I'm going to take the opportunity and use this platform to thank each of you for your courage, for persevering through the achievement of your ideals, and especially for your ingenuity towards taking actions to create those things that continually look to improve lives, improve process, and especially improve world impact. You are really the bright lights of tomorrow, and I'm confident that given time and appropriate funding, many of the pitches we heard today will be responsible for the future change, growth, and prosperity of, of our future economies. So again, thank you so much for your participation. So I would also like to express my gratitude to my fellow jurors for volunteering their, their time with the Scotia Women Initiative for WISE 24 and for playing an active role in the assessment of those talented individuals and their associated ventures. So I'll take a little bit of time just to name them. Um, so that would be Elaine Kunda, founder and managing partner of Disruption Ventures, uh, Sophie Palmer, regional director and portfolio manager of the private wealth management Jaroslawski Fraser. Caroline Bell Ritchie, Managing Director of Ultra Net Worth Wealth Management, Jaroslawski Fraser. Catherine Parent, Director of Investments at Roynet Equity Partners. Melissa France Heredia, who is a District Director of the Montreal uh, Office and Regional Lead of Technology and Innovation Banking for Roynet Capital. Also, I just wanted to take a moment to, to thank Melissa for moderating today's panel with such grace and eloquence. Um, and Andre Lees and Elaine and Cindy Eve, it is with great focus and interest that I listen to each of your exchanges on the panel moderated by Melissa today. I was truly inspired. Your remarks are indeed a reflection of what this whole event is about. And I could not agree with each of you more on the importance of investing in innovation and impact, supporting diversity, being aware of the existence of unconscious bias in this ecosystem, the role modeling, that role modeling the change we want to achieve is important, that we have a responsibility to bring along with us other women and promote these same values in this ecosystem. And finally, understanding that the strategic place, the strategic place that international expansion plays in each of our uh, growth strategies. So I feel privileged to work alongside partners and peers, such as the individuals that I mentioned, who are focused on being the catalyst to accelerating and promoting the innovative work of our female entrepreneurs. We were frankly, and I repeat, quite impressed with all the startup pitches, as well as the founders. But nonetheless, on the basis of the selection criteria I mentioned earlier, one startup stood out repeatedly and ranked in the top position with the majority of the jurors across the four criteria categories. The startup is co-founded by a woman and addresses a gap shared by a large proportion of women worldwide, the unmet need for reliable, hormone-free, non-invasive non contraceptive options that the market currently does not offer. As a matter of fact, Eli aims to enable women to take control of their health across the spectrum of their reproductive lives by providing them with powerful information on their daily hormone profile by way of tracking hormones through a saliva sample. The hormones in the saliva samples are then tracked using a consumable, a polymer, and a medical device and digital health technology. So without further ado, congratulations to Marina Pavlovic-Rivas, 
you are the winner of the Wise24 Montreal 2020 Jury Award. On behalf of Scotiabank, we're pleased to offer this award of $5,000 towards your startup, e Eli Health. Would you oh, like to share a few words with us, Marina? Thanks a lot. I, to be honest, I really didn't uh, expect that since I was so impressed by by the quality of my my fellow founders. So, so I'm really really glad um, that you well that you recognize the, the need we are we are addressing. But I want to say that I'm I'm so impressed uh, by the the other by the other pitches, and I'm glad to be part of this. Uh, this community today it was so empowering to see um, other women founders, but also the the panelists and and talk about this uh, those problems that we still have to exactly. well to advance as a as women founder. So so I'm glad to 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 have this uh, this recognition. Thanks thanks Thank a lot you. to everyone. You're very welcome, Anna. Back to you. Thank you very much, Maria, and congratulations once again, Marina, and to all the founders and co-founders that took part in the event today. Again, I don't think we can see it enough. We are so impressed and so hopeful when looking at the extraordinary work um, that you do. So this, we are getting... Um, at the, at the end of this um, really adventure <laughs> that has been WISE 24 Montreal, but the adventure, um, I would invite you to continue it um, online. So we've shared for you uh, a few hashtags that we've been using, and I strongly uh, encourage you to, to use those hashtags and to, um, to share your WISE 24 experiences with us. And uh, to our attendees, I would like to say that if you're curious to learn more, uh, in addition to the Montreal panel and pitches, all day today, you are able to hop on, hop off to discover founders from across the world and see other world-class uh, keynote speakers on the WISE24 platform. So the WISE24 uh, event will be webcasted live for a 24-hour period. Um, it ends tomorrow, June 19th in Asia, and I believe you do have the, the link on our registration page also to um, register for uh, the, main, the, the global event. So if um, you feel like browsing through, we strongly encourage you to, to do that. Um, as, uh, as an ending note, uh, again, I would really like to thank from the bottom of my heart everyone at the Scotiabank Women Initiative Scotiabank, Roina Capital, Jaroslavsky Fraser, um, everybody from our team that made this possible. And again, express our gratefulness to our partners, uh, our speakers from the panel uh, at Disruption Ventures, Cycle Capital Management, and Global Trade Affairs Canada. We've been working closely with your teams um, to make this happen over the last few days. I also would like to once again thank all the member of of all the members of the jury for believing in this uh, again from its very beginnings and for uh, gracing us with your time, your invaluable input, and just this commitment towards uh, helping us uh, propel these incredible founders and co-founders. Uh, to uh, Melissa Francis well, who took on the double role to be on our jury and to moderate, uh, and to all the ecosystem organizations, the other VCs, uh, the incubate, the accelerators, university accelerators. Um, we work closely together uh, in uh, in really um, again handpicking some of our very very best. And um, as a, a, an ending note, I would like to um, address to our dear founders. We truly wish you the very best on your paths onwards and upwards. We are here along the way to support you in your journeys to innovation and global impact. And we salute your courage and ingenuity. So thank you for doing this important work. And please stay connected with us online using the hashtags WISE24, WISE24 Montreal and Scotia Women Initiative. Thank you again for your time, your support, and I look forward to seeing us um, be this change that we want to see in the world. Thanks again. Congratulations, Marina.